do this show. What's that? Alright, welcome back to Turing Complete, the game where we try to build a computer. Um, last time we covered a bunch of um, gate logic and stuff, and we completed these three sections. Alright, so next we're gonna do the next we're going to be doing CPU architecture, which is. Looking quite fun. So, without further ado, let's continue. I've been I've been thinking about playing this game for a very long time. Add addition and subtraction to your circuit. Instructions: zero or one and two nor three and four add five sub. Wait, is this the circuit I built? Probably, because it's very messy looking. Um, okay. Oh, crudge, I did it the hacky way. Man. I guess we should probably clean it up a little bit. Nah, let's just let's just hack it. Let's hack through this section of the game. Uh, so what we will do is um, four is going to be our indicator that we're doing an add or subtract operation. So we'll we'll drag this up and we'll drag this guy up. And wait, what are the inputs? I guess these are the inputs. So we'll have to grab these up here let's let's section let's section it off like this so we get access to them okay it's already looking a bit messy but actually yeah it's a bit messy hang on let's pass the cable behind so they're out of the way of the mess that we've already created okay um, I guess it's just about using the add to input operation. Although, what we're going to do is we're going to use this little thing here, and we are going to negate it if it's neck, if this uh, one is on. We're going to pass it through a negation. So we'll do switch here. We'll do a switch here, uh, down there. So we'll have to just drag and a bit further along. Um, oh, actually, no, we have to do it to the top one. Because the bottom one already... Yeah, as in we have to do it to this, this one, because that's connected to the bottom one there. So, let's remove some cables. And add some switches. Okay, I think we'll negate the bottom one, like that, connect this to the second one down there, and, oh yeah, we should probably do that, um, so the one is what we want to connect to these ones, so we want to connect this here, this there, and we want it when it's false when it's false we want the top one to work so that's so we need to negate it so now it's true so the switch that switch will be on that will be off 
And as four, all it will do is act as our final switch. So that'll get us... There we go. So that will control whether or not we're doing a addition. Oh, I guess we also need to control this part as well. Oh, we can't move it. Oh, that's inconvenient. If it tells me to do more for the circuit, I'll refactor it properly. Right now, I don't think I need to. So we'll need to connect this here and there. Maybe we reset the wire. Oh, I'm using the wrong switch. There we go. This one. Okay. Then we need to add another switch between there and that. Somehow. Um. Let me move this a bit back. So just connects there. These ones we connect to both. It's just like that. Wait, what? Ah. Oh no. Okay, there we go. We got them cables to work. And now we just need to connect these ones. Like that, like that, like that. And now we... We send this signal. That'll tell us to do any other operations. But we will... Negate. Wait, we'll negate it. So that when this 4 is off, we do regular arithmetic sequence. Okay, this should this should work. So here we're doing the additions. These should control properly whether or not we should we're doing we're going down the addition track or the logic track. The negation we negate. If we want to subtract, we add the neg negation of a number. So if you add its negative, it's the same thing as subtracting. And this circuit. Should work. So how do we test this out? I guess we... Okay, so code would be 4... 1? No. It's the other way around. There we go. So this is addition. So if we add 5... Okay. Yeah, so addition is working. Now let's say we do 69. And 10. If we do this... 59. Okay. This is working. Except when it's not. Nor is not working anymore. Because uh, they just added two. Hang on. So why is this part not working? Oh. That's... That would be why. Um, yeah, I, s I accidentally unplugged these ones. Um, I think it's supposed to be the bottom one like this. Yeah, okay, that's the correct one. Oh gosh, I think I'm gonna actually have to deal with that mess. Time to create your master project, implementing the Overture Computer Architecture. This will be an actual Turing Complete Machine, a true computer in every way. I have locked the red components of this level in place since you always make a mess and don't leave enough space. The mess you make from now on is saved between levels, you no longer get to start fresh each level. Gosh darn it. 
Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to refactor that previous bit. In this level, you need to create a circuit which can copy from a source to a destination. The destruction of byte in this level determines the source and the destination. Bits 1, 2, and 3 give destination. Bits 4, 5, and 6 give the source. Source and destinations can be one of six registers. We will name them reg 0 to reg 5 respectively. Additionally, this map has a dedicated input component which can be the source and an output component which can be the destination. There are bits. These are the bit patterns. Okay, to get a more intuitive understanding of the requirements, click the instruction icon in the upper left corner. It's not this one. Ooh. Cool. Uh, where did they say instructions? Ah. Ooh. So these bits do nothing. And then these are the actual instruction. Okay. So. Wait. So, am I to understand... Okay, I actually don't understand. Hang on. What am I actually supposed to do? Okay, so these are the registers, I'm guessing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the six registers. Um, instruction. Where is instruction being held? The top right? Okay, top right. Ah, wait, there's an out. Ah, right. So... Input... Okay, okay, okay. So input would be the left to, and unused just means, it means nothing. Okay, got it. So that's where we put instructions, and then we get to copy between registers. This is where we put inputs, this is where we do outputs. Okay. I finally understand. And this is an 8-bit number. So, let's do the easy... I guess the first thing we should do is... Um, very simple. Get a byte splitter. So we can deal with individual pins. Actually, let's re... Because I have to do this cleanly now. I think maybe I'll, re I'll reorient it down downwards. So that all the cables start going down. Actually, does it make a difference? Ah, that's great. Let's do it that way. Um, okay. I think. Um, wait. I think we have. Uh, what's this? What's the thing called again? 3-bit decoder, that's the thing. We can use the 3-bit decoder to, to help us um, figure out which bit to use. So, like this. And so the decoder will give us... So this will be register 0. So, whoop. And we, okay, so what we need to do is we need to connect this to, to the save part. Oh, wait, no. Oh, whoops. Um, there it is. Copy from, okay, so this is the load part. Which, let me get the reference to what these components are. Um, oh, if I just clicked on it. Ah, okay. Uh, the top means load, middle save, and then the bottom is how we save in. 
output we get if we trigger load. So we want to load in this case. So we will connect it to load with that. Or I guess we should try and get it as close as possible with that. And we basically do the same thing for every one of them. while trying to maintain cleanliness. And one more. Oh, hopefully I connected them the right way. Oh, I didn't. connecting them one over no okay this is actually zero okay this is one this one's two somehow miss that completely okay next is five and the last one that one we need to connect it to the input should I do something like this could go the long way around why not Hang on. I want to keep I want to align things properly, like that. Oops. Can we connect this in one line? There we go. Looking great. Okay, so that's that one. And we're basically doing the exact same thing for... Outputs. Which is... We're going to use a 3-bit decoder, so that'll turn our 3-bit input into one for each individual output, like that. Maybe we'll, we'll add some space between components in case I have to add anything. So I'll do something like this. What's just the top thing? Oh, disable. I don't think we have we have to disable it yet anyways. Okay. And this one now we connect it to save. So we'll do the whole wire thing again. Okay, I guess I'll do the wire first. That oh I connecting them wrong again. This is the first one we need to connect it to. What? Why is there a... Oh, gosh darn it. There we go. Um... Okay, now be careful. Be very careful. to this, connect this to this, and then finally, the last thing we need to connect is the output. So we'll need to, so we go right underneath there, and connect like that. Okay, it's all connected. So, now that we've connected all of these, all we need to do now is to basically put them all in the same channel so that they can talk to each other as components um i 
I think. Yeah, I think we actually we can just put them on the same wire. Literally, we can just put them all on the same wire. I guess it has to be out. So we'll do that. That. Okay, connect there. Connect there. And that's fine because there should ever only be one active component at a time. So only one component is putting stuff into the wire and only one component is taking stuff out. And I accidentally left myself. Well, actually, no, let's just let's just do everything on the outside. So connect like this and now we just connect everything to it. that and like that voila we're done so let's say so currently up register zero is on register zero is off so let's do so what does input mean um input would be these two no these two there we go and let's say input is three Oh, actually, I think as soon as I hit tick, it's going to start ticking. Yeah. So this is... What does that mean? Input to output. So this is just sending 63 to 63. Okay. Apparently, reg 7 is not getting the value it should be. That would be because for whatever reason the input isn't triggering. Maybe did I swap them around by accident? I did swap them around. Very astute. We're not gonna connect these the right way around. Like that. Yeah, still looks good. And thankfully, I left some space. Okay. Yep, now they're all working as exactly as intended. Okay. Well, welcome to my beautiful, beautiful components. Welcome to the component factory. The circuit you create in here will be usable as components in architectures. The circuitry you create defines the behavior of the component as the layout defines its shape. Component can be added, renamed, or deleted using the schematics menu. Since this level is a tool and not a challenge, you can go to the level map and continue when you want. That was literally not the accent I gave. Um, hang on a minute. Okay, just fixing something that was bothering me. Okay. Maybe I don't actually have to deal with this issue. Should I do it for the sake of just doing it? Making it look nice? I could. Um... Oh gosh, I can export it. Okay, sure. Um, because it looks ugly as hell. Okay, delete everything. Oh, actually, no. Let's let's do it. Just so we we get into the habit of doing it the proper way. 
Oh, this level literally doesn't matter. Oh, screw that. I'm just gonna skip. Circuit below the registers level can copy values between the registers, while the arithmetic engine can do different operations on two inputs. But you need to do to be able to do both in the same circuit. To do this, build a decoder, which will decide which mode our computer is in based on the two bits we haven't used yet. To distinguish between the instructions of four different kinds, the two highest bits will be used to determine which mode we are in as follows. Immediate calculate copy condition. Here means any value. Oh wait, I didn't read the entire log. Determine the mode we are in from the input, then send to the correct output. Uh, okay. Cool. The component factory looks radical. Um, what are we supposed to do again? I am not paying attention anymore. So, instructions? Is it literally we just take the two leftmost bits, these ones, and we just send a signal? Is that it? That's easy enough, right? Oh wait, not decoder. We need to the the bi spitter. And then we do We just need a bunch of ends, basically. And 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 I'm afraid that my mess is gonna come back to haunt me. It's definitely going to come back to haunt me. And... Okay. And what we need... Okay. I think they're ordered in the correct direction. So what we need is we need... Knots on the top two. We need knots on the left one, which will... Okay. Yeah, this will be... The top one will be the least significant digit. Like this. And the bottom one will be that. Okay, that'll be immediate. If we switch that, we'll copy, condition, calculation. I think that's the order they want to do it in. Your circuit has been saved to the component factory. Okay. Time to merge the arithmetic engine circuit you may previously with the register circuit. The calculation circuit was saved in the components factory and can now be added as a component. If you forgot which pin does what, check the circuit in the component factory. Use the decoder to you built to figure out if it should copy between registers or the calculation. Here are four different modes again. For this level, you only need to worry about the copy and calculate mode. Check the instruction by clicking on that. When in calculate mode, take register 1 and register 2 as inputs and save the results in register 3. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, gosh. Ram. Very fancy. Very fancy. Oh, that's my... Wait. What's this thing? Oh, is that machine. And that's Alu. Oh, because I destroyed Alu. Hang on, I need to re rebuild it. 
Because I basically just, like, destroyed the machine. For no reason. Okay, let me fix that. Um, okay, inputs, so we'll, we'll need the 8-bit input, hang on, let me re-import the, oh, I don't, I don't know how to play this game, let me start from here, because these ones I can't delete, yeah. I want to fix this because it looks ugly as heck. Okay. I guess it is worth doing doing this there. Vice splitter first. Now we should use a decoder. Since we are basically only using these bits. Yeah. Actually... No, let's not do that. That's dumb. So, this four component will control this last bit, uh, where we will have the final switch. So, we'll, we basically redo the exact same thing we did before, just a bit neater, because I like I do actually like neatness. So, this will be for four, like that. The top one will be for... Actually, the top one will be... For logic, the bottom will be for arithmetic. So we'll do this. That. Now arithmetic, we'll need another one. Another couple switches. And that. That one is controlled by two. I think basically the exact same way. And, um... I think they both go through a... Or gate. Like that. A bitwise or gate. And then on the other side. Oh wait, hang on. We need to we need to squeeze in a negation. A not bigger. Like that. Um, then there's an ore here, and we're basically doing the exact same thing. We need to do a switch. Basically, we're copying the exact same thing, except we're connecting it but to one, so two. Uh, switch. Switch. Except we're also doing it to each component, like this. So it will be... Yeah, like this. Be the first one. Oh, but then we have to squeeze a knot in. Hmm. 
Maybe we should bring it really close like this. Switch. We'll have to squeeze in a knot. And another knot. There we go. Oh wait, just one knot will suffice. And then we'll need to connect this player. Regular circuits to one. And actually we also need to place a knot on this circuit. Like this. We'll need to drag one more. there because we basically need to do this thing again um, if you're confused about what I'm doing I think I I'm I'm basically doing the same thing I'm basically recreating the circuit I built in the previous episode I just um, I'm doing it without saying much because it's very much a I mean basically doing the exact same thing just To insert a knot in here. There we go. So that's that part done. Wait, that's not connected. Okay, that's part. Oh, wait, no, that's not supposed to be connected there. That's supposed to connect to the to the arithmetic component, which we will reroute this way. Actually, we'll also need to fork the one here. Um. Let's make the top component the negation. So that we can do this here. So we'll need another switch. Um, two switches again. The first one, the bottom one, as always, will be the one where we do negation. Like that. Like that, like that. And we'll fork... Work here. Um, no, hang on, that won't work. We need to we need to squeeze in a knot. So we can do this, but we do have to squeeze in a knot. Okay, like this. And then we need to put in the addition, the adder, wait that's, uh, that's the wrong adder, this is the right adder, and I'm connected there, okay, <sighs> fix it, this should do the exact same thing, but look at how overwrite. But look at how much better this looks. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Definitely so much better. Okay. It fits in one nice compact set. Alright, let's go back. Um, yes. Ah, okay, so that's why we need to disable these. Okay, okay. I'm understanding things now. So, now, these two bits, we're gonna first have to make them 
control. Actually, no. First, we're going to implement the the actual circuit that we want. Oh boy. I just realized there's a slight issue with the way I've wired everything. Because this is one big circuit, um, I can't do something like this because it'll connect everything. We basically very quickly get a short circuit if we do it this way. So... What's it, wait, what does the bottom do? Oh! I didn't know it actually had an always... I didn't actually see that one. Wait, that's useful. We can use our ALU. There we go. Look at it. Look at the cute little ALU. Yeah, we'll leave it here. Okay. And we will connect it. Oh, wait. What's the requirement? Save it. So take from register 1 and 2, which is not what I'm doing. I've taken from register 0 and 1. Take from registers 1 and 2, this, these ones in particular. Okay. Yeah. This part is instructions, so we don't need to worry about that yet. And save it in register 3. So that is that one. But of, of course, uh, we need a switch here. We need a switch to make sure that connect this. We don't run into issues. Um, then. What we need this little boy this little boy will have to will have to do some of the work for us so let's drag out these outputs oh actually no we don't have to Okay, um, actually, I think we're basically forking, so let's, let's put deck here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave, we'll squeeze this thing above here, but there should be enough space. Um, immediate, so, is there a, okay, there's a log. Um, calculate copy condition. So when we have copy, so copy is the third one. So if I'm correct, what N saying? Copy will negate causing this this to always be off. Okay. That's fine. So what we need to do is we need to negate it then. Like that. We'll put it like this so I can still pass wires past it. Which won't... Okay. Like this. Okay. Then. So when it's on, otherwise it, it turns these off. Then we need to calculate. Calculate, we just need basically one wire, and that wire goes there. So we'll we'll pass the wire behind everything, I think. We'll go we'll pass the wire behind everything. Like that. And that should be all golden. So so now when we do 
Oh wait, no, not quite. Now it should be golden. So when we do a... Oh, because it's still outputting. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, so we need to put a... And that's, that's actually... No, that's fine. I mean... When this issue arises, it basically just means I need to replace it with an ore. I need to put an ore there. Like this. I'm not there. Like this. And you. Connect like this. Okay. Oh, wait. Ah. Oh. Crudge. I connected it to the wrong ones. Bridge. It's fine, we'll fix this very quickly. Okay, this is these are the ones we need. Don't mind me. Just just doing just doing my I I love doing this part so much I want to do it twice. We need to add the switch first. Let's put the switch outside, actually. Let's wait here. There we go. And... So they're in the correct place. And now we need to do the same thing here. So we need to put in an... A or an or like that. Be this one. Connect there, connect there. You also need to connect to here. Perfect. Like that. And so now all we need to do is we need to get the the command back into the circuit. Uh, I think we could probably just use this thing. Oh wait, no, we just need to pass the number in. That. Done. We have a short circuit here. That would be because I put I'm connected to the wrong component. Oh shoot! That's the load component. We want to connect it to the save component. My bad. Actually, I could have just used the same one. Um, yeah. So we need to just put it there. We need to connect it to this component. Then like this. Okay. This will work. See? It's working.
we made ourselves a circuit. Huzzah. Conditions? This value has... Oh, we have to make if... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're doing conditions. Ah. Okay. Let's let's keep this on the Oh wait, that'll be hidden by my uh, uh Can I make this smaller? Okay, we don't need to see yeah, we don't need to see what the what this thing says. Although I want to try and hide as little as possible. Because my camera is gonna be in the way for some of it. Is here fine? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Well, you know what they say. Always start with a bit decoder. A bit splitter. And then do a bit decoder. Like that. Actually, we don't need it. I think we don't need it. Okay, let's do the first bit. Which is, if the bottom two are... Um... Yeah, uh, the bottom two is if the these two are all, are both um false. That's the word I needed. In which case, very easy. All we're going to do is we are going to take um, we'll take the end like that and the output will be if, if there was a way of changing the side where the, the S came that would be wonderful Well, I guess it can't be helped. Okay, so if the bottom two are full... Let me just quickly use an end. There we go. <laughs> if the bottom two are full... I'll put an I'll put whatever the first one is. So if it's red, it'll be never if it's be always. Now if the first bit is on, we want to test for zero. And we want to return true if zero is returned. Wait, actually, maybe we can do this systematic. Maybe we don't even need this thing. <laughs> or actually, no, no, no. I think I know. I, I think I understand what's going on. We're exoring. We're going to be used. So the last bit will exor this table is the idea. Because never is the opposite of always. Equal zero is the opposite of not equal zero. Less than zero is, is the opposite of greater than or equal to zero. And so on and so forth. These are perfect 
exoring. So this is fine, but we need to, um, actually, no, hang on. We don't need, to we need none of this. All we need is for that last bit to be an exor. <laughs> Let me place it. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So, and that way, all we need to do is we need to create this top part of the table, and then the exor will take care of the rest of the table for us, because it will flip. It will flip. It would exactly flip this table. So, uh, for this one, the second bit. So actually, let's look at the the first bit. So this tests for zero, and it will return true exactly when this is zero. So for the first bit, and then false if this is not zero. Um, hang on, how do we test for zero? That bit I actually didn't think about. I wonder if there is an efficient way of testing for it without going through the rigmarole of rolling out a byte splitter and testing if everything is zero. Oh gosh, maybe we actually do have to do that. Wait, what does this do again? Okay, it doesn't do what we want to do. Is there a way we can use uh, logic gates to build this? Um, and why is my connection so bad? Let me chess. Where's my connections? Uh, oh well. Okay. Where were we? We'll do, we'll test for zero with the bottom one. And the bottom one, all we need to do. We'll do it the painful way, because I feel like that is the best way of doing it. I can't think of a, a better way of doing it. So we'll basically use an ore here, or there, and I guess we'll just we'll connect the ores here. Okay. So, to test for zero, all we need to actually this is not even that bad. To test for zero, all we need to do is we need to check if any of the bits are on. Because if any of... So the, the zero is represented by all of the bits being false. So if any of the bits are on, this or will light up. And then... Oh, and then basically that will fulfill uh, these two ones. So it will, it will fulfill never... And we'll fulfill the bottom. So then all we need to do... I think we need to XOR again. Maybe? No, probably not. No, we don't XOR. I think we AND. Um, wait. I have, to, I have to think about what exactly we're doing. So, I, it actually could be an exor, but that feels wrong somehow. Um, So 
So if if this bit is red, we want we don't want yeah we want this to be not lit up. So wait, we want the output to be false. If this bit is lit up, we want the output to be true. So I think what we need is. Yeah, so either this is red and we don't care about this thing, or this is this is green and we do care about it. And we and we only want to output to, to use this machine if it's green. Uh so I think what we're doing is we are I think we're gonna be using an OR gate. Okay, and so what we need, so the output for the second bit, so for the for the other test, which will actually be much easier. Um, actually, should we just do the other test first, just so I can get my mind my my mind about how to connect this thing at the end. The second test is very easy. Um, to check for if a value is negative, all we need to choose check if the last bit is on. Because the last bit, so in the actual system, the last bit is minus 128. If it's on, this number has to be negative. And if it's not on, this number has to be positive. Because minus 128 is just too big. So, to test if it's negative, we just need to test if this is on. Um, so... So now I have to think. Okay, I'm I'm definitely overthinking it already. Um, I'm thinking about using. Oh, that's what end gates are for. Da 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 da. I am silly. We'll be using end gates. Okay. The end gate. Will, will own so basically this will this effective what this effectively does, this end gate, is it will only let a signal through. If this, if our gate condition holds, so in this case, our gate condition is this this light being on. So if the light is on, that means whatever this this re result is, we let it through. In this case, it's if it's a negative value, then sure we let it through. Um, same with here. If the value is zero, actually we build a circuit that pro that checks whether if it's not zero. Uh, so we'll have to invert it first. We could also just, I think, replace. No, 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 no. Let's just do it simple. Otherwise, my brain will malfunction. Similarly, we'll use the fourth gate as the as the sort of gate thing. Okay. There we go. And this and then we just combine everything with an OR. And then as I said before, this final XOR will flip this table. So we will get basically the bottom table just with everything flipped. Except I'm not going to because I actually flipped the bits around. 
this bit should be one. And this bit should be four. Aha, gotcha. Hope you are paying attention. Okay, this should work. Um... Oh, I didn't connect here. That's where... That's where I missed. Now, it's still not working. Why is that? So, the value is less than zero. So, right now... Okay. How do I... If value is less than zero, currently... So, that is... Is that correct? That should be correct. Okay. There we go. I just didn't connect things to, to the to the proper circuit. Your circuit has been saved to the component factory. Hang on, let me fix this. Because actually we don't need we don't need this component, really. We can use the previous component. We just need to move everything up a bit. Um maybe remove this. So let's just highlight all of these and move them up like that. And then we'll just fork this one. Yeah, we need an OR gate. Like this, like that. We'll need another AND gate. Exactly like this. And now we just need to get this signal down there. Which should be doable. I think we can go like this. Like this. Like this. Like this, like this. Okay. So now it's a bit more compact. Which I think would look better. Uh, wrong button. Alright, next. The instruction input component has been removed. It has been replaced by a program component. Every tick, use the counter to load the next instruction from the program's memory. You must use the counter component you unlocked earlier for this level. Wow, big, big thing. Every tick, use the counter to load the next instruction from the program's memory. Um, wait, why does that one look so ugly? Hang on. Yeah, just this thing. Why is there? Oh, because it only it only highlights it for if I have a component, but it doesn't include the wires. I see. That's kind of ugly looking. So be it. Uh, what does it want us to use? The counter. I don't know. Where's the counter? The counter? Oh, is that the counter? So how does this thing work? Address, output. So what, do you just want us to effectively just put that there? Put this here? And just like plug it in, like that? Okay. Easy enough. 
We need a way to directly move numbers from our program into registers. For this, we need we use the immediate mode when the two highest bits are both zero. While in immediate mode, the whole byte is re is interpreted as a number that we save into reg zero. This means we can save any value between zero and sixty three. Oh. That's not a very big number. Um, okay, that's fine. So when these are zero, so that's when we have this thing. We want to save the number. Okay. There's an easy way of doing this. What we're going to do is we're going to take our number and we're going to end it. So we, we're going to need to to make a number. There we go. We're basically just going to need the number. There we go. There we go. So we're going to need this number. Let me bring it closer. Ah. I wish it would not just be selected. So we can't we can't spin it. It's okay. I'll just rebuild it here actually. Make it easier for me. Um so we'll build it here. We'll build it upside down. That's okay. We can still read upside down numbers. So the reason I'm building this component like this is so now we can use a trick. Very nice trick. I have here the number 63. Wow, what's so important about the number 63? Well, if we end it... You know what, I actually don't have to do that, do that because the two, the two bits are already gone. I am silly. I was going to end it with this number to basically just get the, the six digits that we need. But actually, we can just plug it in directly. All we need is we need a switch. We need a switch. Like that. And we need to connect this to this thing. And... We also need... Um... this thing. We need to connect it to to the save of this thing. So we need to connect it to this. So we need an OR gate. We'll get around here. Something like this. And connect it to load. That looks ugly. Let's let's connect it the long way like this. Perfect. Look at this. Okay, and this should load the correct number in. Like this. Alright, what's the last thing we need? Until this point, all possible programs have been confined to running in order of bit, byte by byte. Before, only code could influence memory. Now memory must influence code. With the addition of conditional logic, a computer can run any algorithm and calculate anything calculable. 
The final thing we need to add is a mechanism for changing the program counters through instruction when certain conditions are met. When the two largest bits are both true, we are in condition mode. In condition mode, the value is reg3. In, in register 3 is compared against the condition defined, defined by the lowest 3 bits in the instruction. If the condition is true, we overwrite the counter to the value in reg 0. Conditionally, changing the counter means we can skip instructions based on conditions or have instructions run in a loop. These conditions correspond to the condition component that was saved in the component factory. Yeah. So we have our conditions component. Okay. So now we can we're connecting. Oh gosh. Wait, the last three bits. Wait, wait, what? Come again, hang on. Okay, there we go. Oh, we're checking the value of reg three. If the condition is true, we overwrite the counter to the value in reg to zero. Okay. Gotcha. I understand now. Um, register three is this one. So this one will go into here. And we'll also need to pass in this number. Okay, it does give us an output. And this output... We need to pass it here. And zero, we'll need to bring this along. We can bring both along for a ride. we have to bring both of these numbers all the way through anyways. Zoop. Oh yeah, we can just connect it like this. Like this. Although I do actually like to to not have these dangling wires. Okay, so now, if condition is true, although we also need to gate it by um, by this thing, because we can't just have it go all the time. So here we'll need to we'll need to end it first. Like that. Perfect. And then... That's basically it. So we've connected our condition, and if it's true, we overwrite our counter with whatever is in register zero. Yes, you did it. I thought you were just this odd-looking, hairless ape creature, but you actually built a real computer. Amazing. I did it. Kind of. All right, and that is going to do it for this episode. The rest of the VOD is going to be uploaded 
later on, where you get to see me do all of the fun programming stuff. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you stick around for another one. And uh, hope you have a good day. Goodbye.